In this video, I'm going to apply one of Maxwell's equations to an interesting system. The, one of Maxwell's equations that I'm going to choose is Ampere's circuital law. But it's actually one of the previous versions of Ampere's circuital law before Maxwell modified it. It's Ampere's circuital law without the displacement current term that Maxwell added in. So this is it stated here in integral form. It says that the line integral of the magnetic field over a closed uh, curve C is equivalent to mu naught, the permeability of free space, times the surface integral of this electric current density vector. That's what J is. And we're doing that surface integral over the surface S. C is the boundary of S, right? So C is a boundary curve, and S is that surface that is bounded by C. So that's the law we're actually going to use to find the magnetic field around this wire. So the system that I've chosen for this video is a wire with constant current going through it. And this constant current is I. I is the constant current that is going through this wire. And this is a straight wire. Because it's a straight wire, it has a very useful property. And that property is cylindrical symmetry. So what we can do is we can draw a cylinder around here, and everything's going to be symmetric. If I rotate this problem any amount of degrees along the axis of the wire, it's exactly the same problem. That means there's no dependence on the angle. The only thing that's going to uh, mess up the problem is if we rotate along this axis, or if we move a distance that is uh, a radial distance away from this axis. So cylindrical coordinates are the most convenient for this system because it has cylindrical symmetry. So let's use cylindrical symmetry and Ampere's circuital law to find the magnetic field around this wire. First of all, let's use uh, some symmetry arguments to infer what the magnetic field is going to look like. What is the distribution going to look like? For a line of charges, in, in a kind of straight line, the distribution would look something like this over here, because charges act as sources for electric field lines. But we know the divergence of magnetic fields is zero. That's Gauss's law for magnetism. So this is impossible for magnetic fields. You can't have magnetic field lines starting or terminating, because there's no magnetic monopoles. So the only alternative uh, is this kind of situation. So this is the correct sort of uh, distribution that preserves cylindrical symmetry. Keep in mind, both of these guys have cylindrical symmetry. This one has cylindrical symmetry, and this one does also. But what's unique about this one, there is no termination, and there's no beginning for these lines. They just loop around. And the separation of these lines is actually going to get bigger uh, and as we go further away, because the magnetic field will get weaker. But how will it get weaker? And it turns out it's going to be a 1 over r relationship, not a 1 over r squared relationship, as we would see in a point charge for Coulomb's law. So there's some slight differences. Let's do the derivation. So first of all, let's find the left-hand side. Let's choose a uh, curve C, and then we can find the surface integral around that curve. So what I've attempted to draw here in green is a circle. Now this circle is a bit smushed because uh, we're looking at this roughly side on. So imagine this is a current carrying wire, and we have a loop around here. We're drawing this imaginary closed curve, and that is a loop. So this closed curve, C, is actually what we're going to be doing the line integral over. And keep in mind that if this is the symmetry that we have, every circle is going to have the same magnetic field strength because of the cylindrical symmetry. If you rotate this, it has to have the same value because that is a symmetry inherent in the system. So B evaluated at the radial distance R, that's going to be the magnetic field's magnitude at every point along this circular curve. But if we do the line integral, we also have to take into account how long is this curve. Well, all, all we need to do for that is we have to find the circumference of this circular curve. And what's the circumference of a circular curve? It's 2 pi R. So 2 pi R is the circumference. And this is the magnetic field strength evaluated at a distance r from the wire. <clears throat> from the wire. So we have the product of the magnetic field strength times the circumference, that is b evaluated at r, times 2 pi r. That's the left-hand side of the equation. We have done this line integral over the curve c. Now we have to choose a surface s, and we have to do this surface integral of the electric current density vector. 
And it turns out this is actually a very easy integral to do in this situation because there's only one contributing term. It's just this current flowing through because the total current through a surface is the surface integral of the current density vector. And this guy has a magnitude uh, which tells you how much current is flowing through each little patch of area. So this is current per unit area. And its direction tells you the direction that positive charges are moving. But if we do this surface integral through any surface that's bounded by this, if we choose a cylindrical surface, so imagine uh, stretching out a, a cylinder over here, what's going to happen? There's going to be nothing flowing through these sides. There's only going to be one contribution. And that contribution is going to be the single contribution of the current I. This mu naught will remain unchanged. It's just the constant outside the front. So get comfortable with that idea that all of the surface integral of, of the electric uh, current density vector, that is just the total current. If we had more wires going through, we'd have to add in more current, right? If we double the current, it would be 2i. That's, that's what this integral would evaluate to. If we tripled the current, it would be 3i. So what we get on the right-hand side is mu naught times i. So we've computed uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the integral form of Ampere's circuital law. Keep in mind that if there was a changing electric field, that is a non-zero time derivative of the electric field, then we would need an additional term over here, and that's the term that Maxwell actually added. So in this scenario, I'm assuming that there's no changing electric field. There has to be an electric field within the conductor, within this wire, because that's actually what makes the charges move. The charges move because there's some electric field. There's some voltage in that current carrying wire. So the positive voltage is on this side, the negative voltage is on this side, so positive charges will move from right to left. In reality, what's actually doing the moving? It's the electrons, and they're negative charges. So negative charges will move from left to right, the opposite direction of conventional current. But the conventional current is the convention of positive charges moving from right to left. Another interesting thing, uh, the electrons are going to move towards the, uh, the positive end, which is this side, and they're going to move away from the negative end, which is this side. So this is more positive, and this is more negative. So there's a voltage over this wire. Now, let's have a look at some manipulations of this expression. So what we have on this side is the result of that line integral, and we have the result of that surface integral. We can rearrange, we can divide both sides by 2 pi r. When we do that, we get this expression. Keep in mind, this is a scalar value. I'm just taking the magnitude of the magnetic field strength at a distance r away. What is the direction going to be? Well, the direction is actually going to be not in the radial direction. It's always going to lie along a circle. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to loop around. It's going to act exactly as this diagram shows. So there is a 1 over r dependence. It's not 1 over r squared. It's 1 over r. So it's an inverse relationship. It is not an inverse square relationship. There is a factor of 2 pi in the bottom. That comes from that circumference term over here, the circumference of the circle, uh, which is the curve we chose to do the line integral over. So this over here is going to tell you the magnetic field strength at any distance r. So when you're very close, there's going to be a strong magnetic field. And the further away you go from this wire, it's going to be weaker. And it's going to be weaker at, in, in a way that the magnetic field is inversely proportional to the radial distance. And this is the radial distance from this axis of the wire, because we're dealing in cylindrical coordinates. And keep in mind that this direction, the direction of this magnetic field, is not in the radial direction. This is not like those typical examples like Coulomb's law or the electric field due to a point charge. This is not an electric field. This is a magnetic field. So the magnetic field has loops. It doesn't have these kind of terminating or beginning field lines. So these loops are going to be uh, spaced out more and more the further out you go. Just remember, this is a cross-section of this wire. So if you looked at the wire uh, length on and you saw that, that's what you would see. This is, this is the pattern that you would see. And this pattern exists all the way around the wire. So this is just for a constant current. If the current changes, we're going to have some interesting uh, changes to this where the strength of the magnetic field will actually vary as a function of time. So overall, this video was here to show you an application of one of Maxwell's equations.
This is Ampere's circuital law, and we applied it to a wire, a straight wire with constant current. And we found we did some manipulations, and we found what the strength of the magnetic field is as you move away from that wire. We also worked out what kind of distribution would work based on the cylindrical symmetry inherent in the problem.